Hello everybody! So, with the launch of Disney Plus last November, we gained access to a whole bunch of Disney movies that we can watch anytime we want, right at our fingertips. And included in that list is a whole bunch of the cinematic masterpieces known as Disney Channel Original Movies. Which means that you can rewatch a whole bunch of movies from your childhood, most of which you probably thought were fever dreams, and see if they are still as good as you remember. And that is pretty much the premise of this new series called Does It Still Hold Up? Where I rewatch Disney Channel original movies from mine, hopefully your, childhood and see if they still hold up. And first up is Avalon High. I have only seen this movie once, 10 years ago, haven't seen it since, and now have no recollection of the events of the movies, and I decided to rewatch it. So, long intro short, I'm gonna be telling you my thoughts on the Disney Channel original movie Avalon High after rewatching it after 10 years and answering the question. Does it still hold up? So first, I'd like to preface this, as if everything I said before wasn't prefacing enough, but I want to preface this by saying prior to rewatching Avalon High, I really only remember two things from it. One, that Mason from Wizards of Waverly Place, or Greg Salkin, was in it, and two, that there was some villain reveal at the end. Also, this isn't really relevant to the movie, but I remember that it premiered on Disney Channel right before the first episode of Season 4 of Wizards of Waverly Place. And the only reason I remember that is because 8-year-old me was really confused by the fact that Mason was able to be in both of those back-to-back. -back. Anyway, now that we've got completely irrelevant information about my childhood out of the way, let's get into the movie. The movie starts with some knights jousting on a beach. One of the knights falls off their horse and it's revealed to be our protagonist, Allie, who wakes up from her dream on the floor. Why is she on the floor? She fell out of her bed, which for some reason apparently becomes the premise of this scene with her mother running in saying she heard a thump. I heard a thump! And then telling her that she used to always fall out of bed when she was little. Then she goes downstairs to where her parents are unpacking because they just moved. Also, her parents are professors of medieval literature or something. Just all you really need to know is that they study medieval things. Anyway, Allie starts complaining that they move like every six months, to which her parents reply that this time they're not moving in six months. They're moving in three years. Now here, this movie does that weird thing where you think a character's gonna react one way and they react a different way. However, they do it so that you're supposed to think that Allie's gonna be mad that they're moving in three years, but instead she's happy. But wasn't she just complaining that they move so frequently? So why would she be mad that they're not gonna be moving for a while? I don't know, but she decides to go for a run, and because it's a Disney movie, she runs into a boy. And this boy is Mason from Wizards of Waverly Place. I mean, Greg Sulkin. I mean, Will Wagner. And this is probably the weirdest human interaction I've ever seen. After you. Thanks. All done? Actually, that's pretty much the theme for this movie, just a whole bunch of the weirdest human interactions you've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of weird human interactions, most of which I was a part of, but that's besides the point. Also, Greg Sulkin does an American accent in this movie, which was just really weird to listen to. And Steve Valentine, who plays Mr. Moore in this movie, also does an American accent as a British actor, which was also very weird to listen to. So anyway, now it's Allie's first day at her new school, Avalon High. Hey, th that's the name of the movie! And she finds out that Will Wagner, the guy that she met running earlier, also goes to that school. Hey, water fountain girl. But she also finds out that he has a girlfriend. No! Then the teacher, Mr. Moore, who I mentioned earlier is played by Steve Valentine, breaks the class into groups for a project about Camelot. He partners well with Karen, a character that we never see because she really isn't important to the plot at all. What is important though is the topic that he's given the sports of Camelot, because he's head of the football team, which is quite honestly his only personality trait. Okay, not really only, but pretty much. And then Will's girlfriend and best friend get partnered up and given the topic the tragedy of Camelot, the love triangle between King Arthur, his wife Guinevere, and Sir Lancelot. And this ends up being foreshadowing for the exact situation between Will, or King Arthur, his girlfriend Jen, or Guinevere, and his best friend Lance, or Lancelot. Yeah, I think they got a bit lazy with that last one. Anyway, Allie gets partnered up with this kid Miles, who throughout the whole movie keeps having visions of the future. It starts out with little things like Allie in the entire shoe or banging her knee on the wall. But by the end of the movie, it pretty much becomes the writer's get-out-of-jail-free card for moving the story along. 
Anyway, Mr. Moore gives them the topic of the Order of the Bear, or the prophecy that King Arthur will one day be reincarnated, as will Wagner. However, they can't find any information about the Order of the Bear and end up having to reluctantly ask Allie's parents for help. And by reluctantly, I mean that Miles tells Allie that they should probably ask her parents. Allie says no. Miles says that they really should ask her parents. And then Allie agrees. So they ask her parents to take some book from a hidden cabinet and give them a whole bunch of exposition. Now the question everybody should be asking is why the heck would Mr. Moore assign them a topic that they can only find information about because Allie's parents just happen to have a book hidden somewhere in a cabinet? Now you could argue that Mr. Moore did know that Allie's parents were medieval professors, but he had them pick the topics at random out of a helmet so there was no way he could know that Allie would get that topic and this thing doesn't make sense. Anyway, the next day at school, Mr. Moore asks Allie if she got any information about the Order of the Bear from her parents, to which Allie replies that yes, she did, and that the prophecy seems a bit far-fetched. To which Mr. Moore replies, Well, it's only far-fetched if it isn't true. Doesn't that apply to everything? Then Allie goes for a run and her hat blows away. Her hat blows away. Her hat blows away. You know, hats, those things that are always, you know, blowing away in the wind. I mean, does that always happen to everybody? You're just walking down the street and a gust of wind comes and blows your hat away and, you know, it's, it's a daily occurrence. Anyway, her hat blows away and surprise, surprise, Will catches it. So they have a conversation about how Will used to love football, but now he doesn't because he's under a lot of pressure to win the championship and get a football scholarship to go to college. So then Alec gives him a pep talk and offers him a friend burger. Yes, a friend burger, aka a stupid term that this movie came up with for a hamburger that you platonically offer your crush who is in a relationship. So anyway, Will basically cheats on his girlfriend by having a friend burger, but don't worry, it's okay because his girlfriend is also cheating on him with his best friend, so this kind of, you know, cancels each other out, you know? Then Allie and Miles go to a party at Will's house, and then Miles has a vision that Allie's gonna find out that Jen is cheating on Will with Lance, which immediately happens, but Jen tells her not to tell Will because he's under enough pressure trying to win the championship. And then Will's stepbrother, Marco, also tells her not to tell Will, or else. Ah, yes, or else. Very threatening. But she tells him that she wasn't going to anyway and he should back off. So, then she decides to tell him. But Marco shows up and goes like this. Oh, he's telling her that her lips are chapped and she needs to put on chapstick? No, no, he's telling her to zip her mouth. Oh, that makes more sense. Anyway, Miles rides his bike to Allie's house and is like, you need help. And Allie's like, what do you mean I need help? And he's like, you need help. And she's like, why do you keep knowing what's gonna happen before it happens? And he's like, oh yeah, that's something that happens sometimes. And then he shows her a hidden page in the Order of the Bear book. And this page says that King Arthur will return on the night of a total eclipse and a meteor shower at the same time, which only happens every thousand years. So they look it up and they find out that the next time this will happen is next Friday, also the night of the championship game. The page also says that Mordred, King Arthur's evil stepbrother, is going to try to destroy him. So they figure out that King Arthur is Will and his evil stepbrother Mordred is Marco. And as if this wasn't enough exposition for you, they also find out that any sword that King Arthur holds becomes Excalibur. So yeah, if you couldn't tell, this is a whole bunch of what I like to call foreshadowing. So now it's the night of the championship game, and Will catches Lance and Jen together and leaves. Then, Alan decides to run, because that's apparently how she always finds Will, and she does. She finds Will. But before she does, she is pushed by a mysterious person in black. Anyway, then she tells him that he is King Arthur, but he just thinks it's a metaphor, so he leaves to go back to the school for the game. The clubs and meteor shower happen, Will and Lance make up, and Will gives the team a pep talk. Then, Will forgets his helmet, and he has to go back. And immediately, Lance starts asking where he is, saying everybody's looking for him. Now, did the team just come out? How are people already asking where Will is? I don't know, but Allie and Miles go looking for him, and Miles has a vision that Will is with Marco in the school's theater. So they go to the theater, and they find out that Mr. Moore is actually Mordred. Ta-da. Surprise ending. Yeah. You really just said ta-da. Surprise ending. Then Marco pushes Mr. Moore into the orchestra pit, and he proceeds to give them a bunch of exposition, basically explaining that he was trying to save Will this whole time. Meanwhile, Mr. Moore is turning into Mordred. Then he jumps out of the pit and starts fighting everybody. He's about to kill Will, but Allie runs up to protect him with a plastic prop sword. Then the prop sword turns into Excalibur, and it's revealed that Allie is actually King Arthur. So I guess the whole love triangle thing was just a coincidence. Huh. Then they fight on a beach, just like Allie's dream at the beginning of the movie. Allie wins and they teleport back to the theater where a security guard runs in like, hey, what are you doing here? Then Mr. Moore explains that Allie was trying to kill him with a sword, which is now turned back into plastic because Allie isn't holding it anymore. 
But everybody else is like, you know, I, I, have, I have no idea what he's talking about. He's, you know, I think he's a bit crazy. And Mr. Moore is like, but who is the teacher? Because everybody knows that being the teacher exempts you from ever being wrong. Then Miles turns Merlin's staff into a pen. This is a pen. This is a pen. Oh, I forgot to mention that Miles is supposed to be Merlin in this movie. And then they win the scholarship, and the movie ends with them sitting around a round table. A round table. Anyway though, all in all, I think this was a pretty good Disney Channel original movie. I mean, when you're watching a Disney Channel original movie, you expect there to be weird human interactions and weird things like cats blowing away and friend burgers. The acting wasn't the best, but again, that's exactly what you expect from a Disney Channel original movie. So, and Disney Channel original movie standards, I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, want me to continue this series, comment some uh, suggestions of Disney Channel original movies below. And please remember to like, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. With that said, that's a wrap. <laughs>